for all time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our 2022 honoree Clarissa Ward of CNN. Um, <laughs> I'm a little sort of blown away by this whole thing. I, I sort of knew it was a big deal, um, but it's definitely a bigger deal than I had thought. And um, I'm obviously used to being the center of attention, but this, <laughs> this is kind of next level because usually when I'm the center of attention, I don't know it because I'm out in the middle of nowhere and I'm just looking into Scotty's camera and um, it's another thing when you have hundreds of people who you respect uh, and admire in a room talking about how fabulous you are. Um, so it's a lot, but thank you, Marsha, and thank you, Chris, uh, and thank you, whoever made that beautiful video. And um, I am going to, first of all, thank uh, the National Press Club. This is a tremendous honor. And when I first found out about it, I was, I was kind of thrown Firstly, because it is such an honor, but secondly, because when I was looking through all the people who had won it, I was like, does this mean that I'm old? <laughs> I, I was, um, and then once I got my head around that, no offense, Wolf, I mean, <laughs> I was like, I love being old. This is fabulous. Let's embrace it. So, no, I, I, I joke, but this really is a massive honor. It's incredibly humbling. Um, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And um, I'm so grateful for all the work that you have done, that you continue to do, particularly the work that you have done uh, to support the family of Austin Tyson to try to bring Austin home. So thank you for that. And thank you for this honor. <laughs> um, and I do want to do just like a bunch of thank yous, which I know is probably boring for some people in the room. But normally when you win awards, they're like, OK, you have 30 seconds for your speech. And you get up there, and, and you know that people are like, please stop talking. Um, but tonight's my night, so I'm just, <laughs> just going to thank a bunch of people. Um, so I mean, a lot of them are here, and it sort of covers this range of my career from my friends Courtney and Marsha, who were there in 2005 when I first started doing field work, um, to my agents, Steve Hurst and Carol Perry, who, when I was 26 and a freelancer for Fox News in Baghdad, um, made the kind of courageous decision that they were going to sign me, even though I had a sort of weird transatlantic accent, transatlantic accent and weird kind of non-TV hair. Um, and I guess you could argue that really not that much has changed, <laughs> but it was a significantly riskier investment at the time. So thank you for making it, and thank you for supporting me, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, and then Amy and Tellis, who gave me my first real job, guys, my first big job as the Moscow correspondent for ABC News. And I remember this was this tremendous opportunity, but I was also feeling that it was really tough to get on TV and Russia wasn't in the news all that much and I was doing my Russian lessons and spending a lot of time trying to find stories. But at home I would often like feel very depressed that I was kind of far away from the biggest story and I was like, I don't even know why I'm in Russia. It's never gonna be a big story again. <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> It was a really good investment. <laughs> um, and thank you for, for, for believing me and for kind of helping me grow as a journalist and for bringing me to CNN, um, ultimately, which has been just the opportunity of a lifetime. And then Chris, who, as he mentioned, um, Chris and I first got to know each other at CBS. And Chris had created the the coolest morning show. Uh, he had previously already created the coolest morning show, then went on to create an, the coolest, and now is actually on his third incarnation of coolest morning shows. But I remember calling Chris once, and I'm sure you don't remember this, 
But I was in tears because I hadn't been deployed on some big story that I really wanted to be on. You'll see this is kind of a recurring theme. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, I just want to be there. How do I get there? And Chris, you said something to me that really stuck with me. You go, you know, the thing about you, Clarissa, is I think what sort of distinguishes you or what makes you special is that you're, you're often doing the stories that other people aren't doing. And that really stayed with me because, first of all, it made me realize that m maybe that was something I actually did that I hadn't sort of taken into account consciously before. But also, I think it was the first time I felt really seen um, and, and appreciated and understood, not just in the way of like a platitude, but in a kind of sincere and thoughtful way. Of course, you were also just trying to get me off the phone. <laughs> um, um, which is like totally understandable. So, um, but yeah, and now we're 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 reunited um, here at CNN, and there are so many people at CNN. I mean, so many of whom are here tonight, and I'm I'm kind of blown away by it because I know it's a lot to give up an evening, and um, you know, I'm just yeah, I really appreciate you all being here. I really appreciate the incredible support that everyone here has given me. Um, I really appreciate the fact that when I called then uh, head of CNN International, Tony Maddox, and told him that I wanted to embed with the Taliban, he did hang up on me. <laughs> but then when I called him like the fifth time, he, he was like, understood that I was serious about it. And it did take longer to persuade CNN than it took to persuade the Taliban. <laughs> but we got there in the end. We got there in the end. Um, and, you know, there really are so many people who have given me so much of their time and so much of their energy. And, you know, Leora Kapilis is one of them. Jeff Zucker, of course, was certainly one of them. Um, I mean, I, I can't go through and name everyone because we'll be here all night. Um, and that really would start to get tedious for the rest of you. But it's, um, it's incredible privilege to work with such amazing people. I'm getting to you guys, all right? We're, get, we're getting there. We're getting there. So, of course, um, when you watch that video, you're like, wow, um, you know, that looks great. And what you, what you don't see and what isn't immediately obvious is that there are just huge teams of incredibly um, dedicated, hardworking, brilliant people who help make that all happen, who help make it all come together. And whether that's, you know, the drivers, the news editors, the... Um, security consultants, whether it's people on the desk, people in management, whether it's the cameramen, the producers, like we are 100% engaged in television, especially in a team sport. It's a collaboration. Nothing happens without people working together. That's what makes this job so exciting. Um, it's also what makes it <laughs> challenging on occasion, but in the best possible way. Um, and I'm lucky to really work with the best of the best teams, and you've, you've already been introduced a little bit to Brent and Scotty. Um, and so let me just say that um, I'm so grateful to both of you. Uh, Brent, you have like the, the highest standards in the world. And sometimes I just want you to tell me I did a fabulous job. <laughs> um, you know, but I get that that's not your shtick. <laughs> and, you know, a little funny story about Brent, and I'm sorry if I go over my 10 minutes here, but I'm kind of warming to this. Um, when Brent and I were in Afghanistan, you saw in, in the fall uh, of Kabul, and it was incredibly intense, and no one had slept for five days, and we were working around the clock, and um, we didn't really know what was going to happen. If we were in danger, we were under a lot of pressure to evacuate, but we were trying to avoid that. And we were crashing a piece for that night, and I was writing the script. <laughs> And Brent took a look at it and goes, your first line is pedestrian. <laughs> wow. I did actually throw the laptop at him. <laughs> he says it was at his head. I knew he was good with his reflexes and he was gonna duck. Um, but seriously, I joke, and it wasn't that pedestrian, but it probably was a little pedestrian. And that's my point. My point is that you need people who are holding you accountable, who are pushing you to be better all the time. And that's what you do, Brent, and I'm so, so grateful for it. And Scotty, <laughs> Scotty, you are a total, total maniac in the best possible way. 
and you're a genius. And Scotty will do things, we'll go out, and I remember once we were in Syria and I was in a real strop for some reason or other because it hadn't happened the way I wanted it to happen. And sometimes that's the way the world is. But I was having a little hissy fit and sitting in the back of the car and Scotty just got up with his camera and was like beep, 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 you know, <laughs> just going around, taking video. And then sort of came the car, I was like, do you want to bang out a quick stand up here, just maybe? And I was like, oh, <gasps> fine. Um, and I did the stand up and I got back and I started looking through the material and Scotty had shot an entire piece. Um, without really knowing what the story was, but he knew what the story was because instinctively you have such a big heart and such humanity and you're able to find these incredible moments wherever you go that tell the larger story. So I can afford to be a stroppy cow and sit in the car <laughs> and then come back and write a beautiful piece because of what you've shot. So really, I thank you so much and you know every hour i spend trying to keep you out of trouble with hr is is <laughs> it's worth it it's worth it it's a good investment <laughs> um, um you know I, I i also just want to take a moment to thank and again there's like too many of them to go through the list but like we are often ducking in and out of places traveling in and out I am not an authority or an expert on every single country in the world, far from it. And so we rely hugely and we work so closely with our local colleagues on the ground, whether that's in Ukraine with the brilliant Maria Avdieva, whether that was in Moscow for me at ABC News with Max Carmen and Tanya Stukalova, and honestly, I could go on all day. But the grace and the courage and the patience <laughs> of so many local journalists who I have worked with around the globe, who take the hugest risk, who work the hardest, who share their contacts, who give us nuance and context and help us understand uh, these conflicts in a way that does more justice uh, to these stories. We could not do this without them, and I am so tremendously grateful to all of them. And I am so profoundly aware of the fact, as Marsha alluded to, that we get to go home, right? And we get to get on a plane. And for so many of them, their homes have been fundamentally changed forever. For so many of them, they have experienced the greatest losses and made the biggest sacrifices and still have the courage to continue to do this work. So I am in awe of them and I am truly nothing without them. And um, I do also just want to thank my family. Um, they're, they're not here tonight because they live in London, um, as you heard from um, Marsha and Chris. And I have two little boys and another one. Um, yeah, I'm a glutton for punishment, apparently. <laughs> um, and my parents, um, so they're all in the UK and they're not here. But it is impossible, I believe, to do this job without having a very supportive family, and it would be really arrogant of me not to, um, not to take a moment to acknowledge how hard it is for them. Because, you know, we make it look so, you know, easy on TV, but there are a lot of sleepless nights for my parents and for my husband, and a lot of anxiety around the work I do, and a lot of falling over themselves to pick up the pieces to make sure that someone gets the kids from school or someone goes to the parent-teacher meeting. And so I wouldn't be able to do it without them. And when I first told my father when I was 24 that I wanted to go to Baghdad, I was freelancing for Fox News at the time on the overnight assignment desk. Um, I started at the very bottom of the totem pole. And I said, I, I'm gonna, I'm pushing to go to, for uh, a sort of rotation in Baghdad and, and Fox has said that I can do it and they're gonna let me go. And my father said, well, my father's British. He said, if you try to go to Baghdad, I'm going to sue Roger Ailes. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, dad, I think there's a lot of reasons to sue Roger Ailes. <laughs> Sending me to Baghdad is probably not one of them. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was quite a paradigm shift for him to go from getting ready to sue Fox to being the biggest champion and supporter of my work. So I'm truly, truly grateful to them for 
putting up with me and putting up with this crazy job and, and doing it with grace. Um, I wanted also just to really acknowledge I'm so humbled to be here alongside Rana and Josh and the incredible speeches that you gave and the incredible grace and grit and determination that you have shown and the courage to continue your work are an inspiration and are honestly like profoundly humbling because I was listening to your speeches and I was like, I'm just gonna get up here and like thank a bunch of people for like being nice about me. Um, <laughs> but seriously, I'm in awe of what you do and I'm, I'm, I'm really genuinely humbled to, to be sharing this stage with you tonight. So I just wanna take a moment to thank you. Um, and, you know, I, I just, I guess when I was trying to think of like what else I wanted to, to say, actually, Josh, you really touched on, on some of it, um, because we do live in an era where the bombastic seem to carry the day and where so much is about outrage and anger and entitlement and extreme views and aggression and... That makes our lives very difficult as journalists because we feel we need to meet the moment and we need to defend our positions, which are undoubtedly under attack here and across the world. And at the same time, we understand that when we jump into the fray, we lose something too. And so how do we try to reconcile that need to defend ourselves and defend what this is all about and the importance of this work without um, excluding other voices or refusing to listen to other people. And I think that, you know, I, I, I spent some time trying to, trying to isolate what the most important qualities are that, that make a great journalist. And I mean, obviously there are so many. Um, so then I was like, okay, well, let's just talk about what you know and, and think about what makes a great war correspondent. And, um, Bob Simon, who is the late 60 Minutes correspondent, who was um, incredibly gracious to me always and very indulgent of my constant questions, said that he believed that curiosity was the sort of key motivation or key quality within journalists that sort of keeps that spark alive, that keeps people asking questions. And it's, it's an interesting one to choose, I think, because you can't fake curiosity. Or you can, but it's really obvious when you're faking it. Like, you either have that innate curiosity or you don't. Um, and I would say along with that curiosity, um, that also tenacity, determination, grit, resilience, but I would add a couple more that I guess like if I would be hopeful that, you know, that my work is, is, is considered as part of now this greater body of work of, of some of these great journalists that I really believe that humanity and compassion can be among the most important tools uh, that a journalist can have as well. And even when you are operating in conflict zones and dangerous and difficult places where your life might be at risk, where the people you're talking to are almost certainly at risk. I think that being able to pause and to be quiet and to listen and to be gracious and to be human and to be compassionate can actually be more powerful sometimes than being loud and being angry and being, um, bombastic, to use your word again. So I thank you all for this tremendous honor and for making my night and for making me feel so special. And um, I guess I just would like to close by, because someone mentioned Pierre tonight and I, I wasn't really ready for that, but now that someone did mention it, I just would love for us all to raise a glass to all the journalists who have been killed doing this work over the years um, and to honor them um, by keeping on doing this work and not letting the criticism get us down and finding space to, to listen and to be compassionate. Thank you. <laughs>